One of the craziest decisions I've taken in my late 20s is to take a second bachelor's in computer science while working full-time as a data science consultant. Today, I'm gonna give you a quick tour of my three-year online bachelor's in computer science program offered by the University of London. I'll also share some of my thoughts about whether I think it's worth it for someone who is working in the data science field or aspiring to transition into data science. To give you some context, I had already been working in data science for a couple of years at the time, but I just felt there was so much I didn't know, and I do love creating stuff either with code or with my poor handcrafting skills, so I decided to apply for the program and I started in October 2019. Even though my day job is quite demanding and already takes a lot of my time and mental space, I just thought if I didn't do it now, I would probably never have the chance to do it. And after all, Mark Twain said, you regret the things you don't do more than the things you do. So let's jump right in. This computer science bachelor's program is offered by Goldsmiths, which belongs to University of London. It's one of the first online bachelor degrees in computer science, which is very cool. The lectures are delivered 100% online on Coursera platform. But before the COVID pandemic, I used to have to travel to a testing center somewhere in the Netherlands to take the final exams. Since the pandemic though, the final exams are also held online, which is much less of a hassle with all the traveling and taking time off work. This program is a distant learning program, so you can choose to either study online or on campus if you live in the UK. Since I have a day job here in the Netherlands, studying on campus is not an option for me. The whole program consists of 22 modules and one final project. Talking about doing projects, I'd like to thank our sponsor for today's video, Project Pro. Project Pro is a curated library of verified, solved end-to-end -end project solutions in data science, machine learning, and big data. All the projects are created by top industry experts from the global tech companies. Here you'll get end-to-end -end project solutions, reusable codes, guided videos, and 24 per 7 customer support. You can get access to more than 3,000 code recipes that are absolutely free, and you can buy the subscription plan to get access to more than 250 solved projects that solve real business problems. They keep adding new projects every month, so you can keep learning and doing new projects. I find this is a great way for learning by doing, and there are more end-to-end -end and comprehensive projects than on Kaggle or in online courses. So if you want to do more data science, machine learning, and big data projects to hone your skill, check out their website projectpro.io and visit Project Pro's YouTube channel to see a variety of project demos and subscribe if it interests you. Back to the computer science program. Each module is organized into 20 to 22 weeks worth of material so the whole degree would take three to six years to complete, depending on your pace. If you're taking the maximum pace, meaning doing four modules per term or eight modules per academic year, you'll finish everything in three years. That sounds a hell lot of work. So you might be wondering, what is the time commitment and can I study this degree while having a full-time job or a busy family? Actually, you could. The degree is quite flexible, firstly, because it's online. Secondly, you can do less modules per semester or take a semester break whenever you want. I'm also taking a semester break right now before doing the final project. There are only two hard deadlines in each module, the midterm around the week 10 and the end term around the week 20 to 22. So for professionals with full-time jobs, this is quite nice. Many of my classmates actually have busy families or full-fledged professional careers and they're still able to maintain a four module per term workload and I'm one of those crazy people with quite a busy day job but I just have to make sure to spend around 10 to 15 hours per week on average to watch lectures and do the assignments and that I don't miss any hard deadlines. So it's definitely doable but of course you can just chill out and take a slower pace. Regarding the financial cost, the degree cost between 11,000 to 17,000 pounds depending on your location. So I'd say this cost is just a fraction of what you would have to pay if you would take a traditional computer science degree. But that doesn't mean it's a small amount of money. If you have a job, I'd highly recommend you to ask your employer to sponsor your study or to support you in some way. And this is also what I did a few years ago. Thank you boss if you're watching this. In the first year of the study, I got to learn some foundational modules. They are introduction to programming one and two, computational mathematics, 
discrete math, how computers work, fundamentals of computer science, web development, algorithms and data structures. One, the introduction to programming courses were in JavaScript and to be honest, they felt a little bit basic for me as I already had some programming experience, but they're still quite fun. I got to make some web games, some uh, drawing apps, even some art and some data visualization apps in JavaScript using p5.js. I definitely felt more confident with my coding skills because you get to learn the coding principles and how how to make a well-structured, clean and robust coding project. Before that, I was mostly like just hacking my way in when it comes to coding. Also, I learned how to read APIs documentation, which is a very, very good skill to have because the programming assignments were often like, okay, please go read the documentation and create this and that feature. At first, it was very intimidating because some APIs are just not so popular and there's no examples on the internet to copy from, but with practice, you gradually get comfortable with it. Computational mathematics and discrete math mostly cover some basic topics you might already learned in high school, including functions, linear algebra, calculus, combinatorics, but there are also some topics that were new to me, for example, conditional statements and proportional logic, and data structures as well. Another interesting module in my first year was how computers work. I got to learn the basics of computer architecture how computers work, operating systems, and how the internet works. Actually, all the things that I took for granted or didn't have the chance to learn as a data scientist. Fundamentals of computer science is one of the most theoretical modules of all, like very, very theoretical. In this module, I learned about logic, proof techniques like induction and things like that, automata theory, regular and non-regular languages, please don't ask me now what they mean, algorithms and complexity theory. The web development module of course teaches you how to create websites. It was supposed to be fun, but I think it was a little bit uninspiring and a bit too basic in my opinion, even though I'm not a web developer. In the second year, things got a bit more interesting. I got to learn object-oriented programming, software design and development, databases, networks and the web, agile software projects, computer security, uh, graphics programming, algorithms and data structures too, and also programming with data. I enjoyed many of those modules. I learned C++ in the object-oriented programming and software for design and development courses, creating a desktop DJ app and a crypto trading bot, and the theories of the software design was also very eye-opening for me. As a data scientist, I often just throw everything in a Jupyter notebook and call it a day. But once you learn the principles of developing and designing software, you get to think harder about how to organize and write your code in a more usable and scalable manner. Computer security is also a very interesting module. It covers basically cybersecurity topics like network security, hashing, uh, cryptography, and blockchain. Algorithms and data structures one and also two in the third year cover pretty much everything about different data structures, recursive algorithms, and then you learn about 15 different sorting algorithms that confuse the heck out of you. But I think it was pretty interesting. If you are a creative person, you would love the graphics programming module. It has like eight different programming assignments where you create different pieces of interactive graphics, both in 2D and 3D. You'd also learn to use physics engines to create games and generative art. I loved this module so, so much. At some point I was like, now I know what to do when I retire. I'm gonna make this silly and useless art. There was also a module called Programming with Data, basically creating some data projects in Python. This module was a bit boring for me as I'm also doing this in my day job, so unfortunately there's almost nothing new for me. In the third year or the final year, you get to choose your own modules depending on your specialization. There are seven specializations you can choose from. Machine learning and AI, data science, web and mobile development, physical computing and the internet of things, games development, virtual reality, and user experience. But you can also choose to have no specialization. I chose machine learning and AI, so so far I've done artificial intelligence, uh, natural language language processing and intelligent signal processing. I enjoyed very much all of them. The AI module covers genetic algorithms, reinforcement learning and generative systems, like using GPT-2 system to create a pop song. 
The Intelligent Signal Processing module is a very heavy module. It basically provides a theoretical foundation of working with audio and video data. It also provides hands-on assignments on creating a speech recognition application and computer vision applications that maybe can detect movements or recognize faces. And the final project which I'm supposed to be doing in my final term is about selecting a use case and create a research together with um, the solution for that use case. One of the things that drew me the most towards this program is the creative aspect of the content. The programming assignments are often about creating a creative application or software, which I really enjoy. Most lecturers are good at teaching and passionate about what they do. They also come from a variety of backgrounds and I really appreciate that. The content of most modules is quite comprehensive and well structured, but in general, there's a lot to be said about things that still can be improved. I feel like there's quite some overlap between some modules. For example, data structures and algorithms topics are covered in discrete math, fundamentals of computer science, and also the data structures and algorithm module itself. So it feels sometimes a little bit redundant. The web development module was a bit far too basic, I think, and didn't cover the modern tools and frameworks. So I ended up taking a 30 hour course on Udemy and I felt it's much better in terms of quality. In the first cohort of this program, there were a lot of logistical issues and technical bugs. The student support was overwhelmed with students' questions and requests and it slowed down the communication and caused a lot of frustration at times. Luckily, I'm in the second cohort and things run much smoother. I think the University of London was also like just learning on the way as this was the first time they collaborated with Coursera platform. Some course modules were not even complete yet in content when the new semester started. So the lecturers were probably still busy recording lectures on the go. But those kind of things don't actually bother me that much. A lot of people also asked me why I didn't take a master's in computer science but a bachelor's because it seemed a little bit lower grade and a bit inferior. Indeed, if you're using your degree to find a machine learning or data science job, a master's in computer science might carry more weight and you take the box in your education if the company does require that you have a master's in computer science. But in my case, this is the second degree and I already did a master's in economics, so I had a little bit more freedom to choose to go one step back. From my experience with my master, I think I enjoy having more time to learn and not having to rush. Each semester lasts 22 weeks or about five months. So even if I'm a few weeks behind my schedule because of my work or holiday, it's not really a big deal. But if you take a master's, usually one to two years, I can imagine that the schedule is much tighter and the pace is much faster. Having more time to learn a module also means you can do more hands-on project assignments because they often take time. So I do feel like I get more chance to experience and create projects and build a diverse portfolio for myself. If you're working in data science, you might be wondering if it's actually worth it to learn computer science. After all, a lot of things you do in data science, especially the machine learning and AI part, originates from computer science. So if you want to go towards the machine learning and AI direction, I think computer science together with a strong foundation in mathematics is the way to go, either by self-learning or taking a degree. If you don't want to take a full degree like this, then I think you should at least be sure to learn data structures and algorithms, software design and development, object-oriented programming, and discrete math. Computer science is in fact a much more established field than data science and a lot of skills you learn here are transferable to other fields and many different job roles. This is why I chose to do a computer science degree rather than a data science degree. Since taking this degree, I feel like there's so much more to data science as how I knew it. It's quite hard to put into words, but it's not simply like I, I'm more confident, I'm better at coding and developing software, but more like I get to learn a lot broader and it gives me a little bit more uh, optimism about creating impact with what I do, either as a data scientist or as an individual. And learning things that are not directly related to my job yet is very fulfilling for my curiosity. That said, it's a big commitment in terms of time and money, so it's really critical that you take into account your personal situation and weigh different options. Maybe a degree is an overkill and you want to take 
a bit less committed route, like taking shorter online courses and self-studying. So if you get value from this video, please smash the like button and comment below what you think. If you want to learn more about how I manage my time working and studying full-time, then check out this earlier video over here. Thank you for watching. See you in next video. Bye-bye.